Tennessee, you've probably passed a cotton field a time or two. You may have admired its beautiful foliage in the summer or been stunned by its snow white brilliance in the fall. But have you ever thought about how this field of cotton impacts you? You probably realize that your t-shirts, shorts, or blue jeans are made from cotton. But what about the cereal you had for breakfast or the potato chips you plan to snack on later? Well, believe it or not, they come from cotton too. In fact, many products on grocery store shelves are made with oils extracted from the cotton seed. So are many soaps and cosmetics. And the cash you buy these products with comes from cotton as well. In reality, it's almost impossible to make it through a day without using this product. Cotton has been cultivated for more than 5,000 years. Once a wild plant, our ancestors soon realized its tremendous value and developed cotton as a crop. Producing cotton was very labor intensive and until the 1950s was mostly done by hand. But with more and more people demanding cotton and fewer acres available to grow it, the old days of horse plowing and hand picking fell to the wayside. In today's market, farmers must be more efficient than ever. That means using state-of-the-art machinery advanced technology, and application of up-to-date scientific research. Each spring, Tennessee farmers begin the complex process of producing cotton. As you will see, providing Tennesseans with food and clothing is a big effort. Come along on Cotton's Journey. Cotton is one of the biggest cash crops in Tennessee, and each year between 300,000 to 700,000 acres are sown. In return, cotton pumps more than $3 billion into the state economy. Tennessee farmers begin cotton planting every April. Because of cotton's long growing season, and since Tennessee is on the northern end of the cotton belt, it benefits the state's farmers to plant early in the year. But growers must be sure the soil is warm enough to germinate the seed. The development of cotton varieties that mature earlier has been extremely helpful to the state's producers. Today, UT Ag Research scientists continually evaluate varieties that will be more profitable for farmers and help Tennessee cotton stay competitive in the world market. After planting, a farmer can by no means sit back and relax until harvest time. While the cotton plant grows, farmers must work to keep their fields free from weeds, bad insects, and disease. Weeds will compete for water, light, and minerals, and if not managed, can choke out a cotton crop. Insects and diseases can also cause major damage if not properly managed. UT Ag Research scientists continually evaluate weed, insect, and disease control methods, and UT Extension specialists and agents help area farmers prepare for these threats to their crop. At several weeks of age, the healthy cotton plant will begin to form flowers. The flower will first appear white or yellow in color. The next day, it will turn red. And the next day, it will fall off, leaving behind a small bowl in its place. Farmers often refer to this phenomenon as white, red, and dead. Over the next few weeks, this bowl will grow until it finally bursts open, exposing raw cotton fibers to dry in the sun. As the plant's leaves dry and defoliate, a cotton farmer is surrounded by a sea of white. This means it's time to harvest. When cotton was hand-picked, a good picker could harvest about 200 pounds in a day. Today's mechanical pickers can harvest 200 pounds in 90 seconds. These pickers use rotating spindles to pick or twist the cotton from the burr. Then a high-velocity stream of air blows the cotton to the basket. Many cotton pickers are now equipped with yield monitors and global positioning systems. This technology allows the cotton yield to be continually monitored and helps farmers determine areas of the field where seed or fertilizer rates should be adjusted to get the best results. After cotton is picked, it is dumped from the picker to a bowl buggy. Then the cotton picker returns to the field. During harvest time, it is important that the picker spend every available second picking cotton. The bowl buggy travels to a module builder to dump its load. Once cotton is dumped into the module builder, it is packed into a dense block. The tighter the module is compacted, the better it sheds rainfall from the sides and the less seed cotton is lost during storage and transportation. The module is also covered with a specially designed tarp for additional protection from weather elements. Once the tarp is in place, the module is released. Eight feet wide, eight feet tall, and 32 feet long, 
the traditional module will weigh in at 20,000 pounds. More recent advances in technology look to further increase efficiency by eliminating the bowl buggy and module builder. It's called an onboard module building cotton picker and was initially designed by Tennessee farmer Jimmy Hargett. The module picker harvests at about the same pace, but it builds a cotton module while it picks. It takes less time to unload a module building picker than to empty cotton from a traditional basket, which allows the picker to spend more time harvesting cotton. This technology can dramatically reduce labor and equipment costs for farmers. However the module was built, it is then tagged to identify producer and farm number. Specially designed trucks using synchronized chain movement gently load the cotton and then haul it from the field to the local gin. The purpose of cotton ginning is to separate the cotton lint from the cotton seed. At the gin, the modules are placed on a feeder. The feeder removes any trash like grass or leaves on the bottom of the module. A machine also removes sticks and burrs from the cotton before it reaches very fine tooth saws that separate the lint from the seed. The seed goes to a crusher to extract the oil that will go into a variety of food products from crackers to salad dressing. The meal that is left over once the oil is extracted goes into animal feed. When it comes to cotton, nothing is wasted. Meanwhile, the lint goes through lint cleaners before it reaches the condenser and ultimately the gin press. The cotton is compacted into a 500 pound bale. This single bale could make more than 300 dresses or more than 1,200 t-shirts. Eventually, the bales from this gin will be shipped at textile mills and then transformed into products you want to buy. This cotton bale will eventually be worn, slept on, and wrapped around hundreds of people. Cotton may start as a single seed, but in the course of a year, it is transformed into hundreds of products we use every day. From its origin in a Tennessee field, it will journey around the world and back again. As Tennesseans, we can take pride in this homegrown renewable resource, as well as the growers who work hard to produce it, and the researchers who strive to make it better. The next time you drive by a cotton field, remember the many uses of this crop and its significance to our world. After all, that is the fabric of our lives out there.